Good morning and welcome to the Climate Land Part Finals um, in Ghana. Um, for many of you, you would know that the Climate Land Part is the biggest green ideas competition worldwide. I mean, this competition is not only held in Ghana, but it's held in about 18 other African countries across Europe, across Asia, and across um, a number of other um, regions. Um, Ghana started participating in Climate Land Parts um, over the last three years, and we've been lucky to chalk some amazing successes. Um, the very first year we participated, um, we had two of our contestants um, being among the top 15 businesses of the African finals. And then later, one of our contestants was actually part of the top 15 globally. So even in our first year, we did set a record. And it's my hope that we'll be able to emulate some of these um, achievements we have had in the past. So basically today we are looking forward to bright ideas. We are looking forward to exciting ideas in the green space. Um, I have the privilege to know the judges. These are wonderful people who have vast experience in working with entrepreneurs and working with businesses, both across corporate sector and in private sector. So I believe the expertise who is also coming to bear has this course. So I'm looking forward to a very exciting competition. I'm looking for you giving your best um, I know you've had about two boot camps, and I don't know if it's two follow-up sessions, but it looks like you've had enough training and preparation for today's pitch event. Um, so I'm particularly excited, and I wish all of you the best, and good morning, and let's get this started. Thank you, Ifra, over to you. Thank you, Ahuma. So now to the introduction, we have three judges on the panel. First, we have Clementia Tete. She's the Director of Corporate and Business Communications at Standard Chartered Bank. She's a communications expert with extensive knowledge in sustainability, public affairs, and public relations. And she works closely with entrepreneurs through the Bank's Women in Tech Incubator Initiative. Secondly, we have Ahuma, who just spoke. He's a Senior Marketing and Communication Executive he has extensive experience working with green businesses and has for the last five years worked on various projects with organizations like World Bank, European Union, GIZ, World Food Program. And what he brings to the table is expertise and advice to ensure that the best marketing and communication principles are applied in delivering the project needs. Lastly, we have Abdul Nasser Alidu. He's the CEO of the, the Little Cow Consulting Limited, and he's a lecturer of brand management and competitive strategy at HSC. He, he brings experience planning financial services, fintech, technology, and entrepreneurship development. And if you're looking for someone to help you build your business and increase sales, he's a go-to person for you. So today we'll have nine clean tech businesses competing, and they'll be repped by their team lead but they'll also have their teammates online to support. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, there are about 1.3 billion tons of food that is lost every year on our farms. <clears throat> In Africa, a third of all the food produced by farmers for human consumption is lost due to the inability of the farmers to immediately sell their harvest or properly store them. This leads to serious environmental damages and financial losses, especially to the smallholder farmer who produce 80% of the food we eat. And this is why we at Yingo Ark have embarked on this mission to reduce food loss on farms, increase farmers' revenue and reduce CO2 emissions. <coughs> Sorry. My name is Ketis Shine Aboitaka. I'm a farmer myself and I relate to the challenges smallholder farmers are faced with. And um, here's our deal. So we produce and sell solar dehydrators for 500 euros. Our dehydrators turn food crops that smallholder farmers cannot immediately sell into dried food ingredients. And this extends the shelf life. In addition, we provide market linkages for the products the farmers produce using our dehydrators and we retain a 25% commission on the revenue. So the market, 
um, for our products is this. Data from the Ghana Living Standard Survey of 2012 suggests there are about 3.3 million farmers in Ghana. And we have identified 750,000 of these farmers as our beachhead market. This market is currently valued at 375 million euros. In the broader African market, which um, we target to enter in our second year, there are about 33 million farmers, according to the International Fund for Agricultural Development. And this market is currently valued at about 16 billion um, <coughs> euros. Um, our customer value proposition is this. The International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFA, may suggest smallholder farmers make losses of up to 45% of their harvest. And we are helping cut these losses and rather increase farmers' revenue by 300%. This higher revenues is as a result of the value addition using the dehydrators we produce. <clears throat> um, sorry. So uh, in the middle is our products. So we produce solar dehydrators. Our dehydrators use solar drying technology to turn food crops into dried food ingredients with longer shelf life right at the source of production. <clears throat> it produces food ingredients that meet food safety standard with zero operational cost to the user. It is mobile and can be easily transported. More importantly, it is designed with local conditions in mind. Um, <clears throat> our customer discovery, under customer discovery, we conducted 20 interviews with individual farmers, uh, food processors, some farmer cooperatives, and one early adapter. And one thing that was clear to us in our key findings is that smallholder farmers expect high harvest and an increased revenue to be able to afford a good life. That is to be able to afford good health care, pay their children's school fees, et cetera. But these are not being met. So here's our financial. We offer our dehydrator at the average price of 500 euros with an average profit margin of 140 euros on each product and a market share of 0.5%. That would translate to about 165,000 customers. So we'll be making a profit of about 4.5 million euros <coughs> by um, our fifth year. Um, with our climate impact, uh, we, we analyzed a report by Diliot, the auditing firm Diliot, which says that um, the average farmer contributes about 16.2 tons of CO2 emissions due to food loss on their farms. And this does not include land usage. With Yingo, we estimate that about 37 tons of carbon credits will be earned from every ton of food dehydrated with our solution. With our 0.5% beachhead market, um, we estimate we'll, we'll save about 70,000 tons of CO2 emissions in our first year alone. Um, the team at Ingo is being led by me, myself. I'm an award-winning farmer, an entrepreneur with 11 years experience. And my co-founder is Ms. Najwa, who is a microbiologist and a three years experience in the field. <clears throat> Our chief marketing officer is Godfrey. He holds an MBA with 14 years experience in retail and marketing. And our finance officer is um, Richmond. Um, he's an accounting graduate with 18 years experience in international finance. We have two advisors, Joseph and Mary. They have a combined experience of um, 63 years in the field of agriculture and local governance. <clears throat> Our founder's dream is this. So we hope to increase farmers' income in sub-Saharan Africa to contribute positively towards food security, to gain a 4.5 million euro valuation by 2026, and to help create a better world by helping reduce 2.6 million tons of CO2 emissions annually. Thank you. Would you love to eat or buy rotten fruits or vegetables? I believe no. Statistics have shown that at least 30% of farm produce estimated at 700,000 US dollars is lost annually through post-harvest loss, which reduces income of smallholder farmers and market women. Our deal. To this effect, World Tech Consult has designed, manufactured and installed solar powered cold rooms called Eco Recharge to assist smallholder farmers and market women extend the shelf life of their produce. We use a model called pay as you store subscription to assist them achieve this. With our market beachhead, 
we have between 44.1% and 51.1% owning to 7.3 million individuals in agriculture in Ghana. And our market share, or our share of the market is 0 0.5, which is 36,500. And we want to achieve this by helping them extend the shelf life of their perishables. With our value customer proposition, we've noticed that poor storage facility and the medium to which these vegetables reach, that is the cold chain supply, is a problem. And Echo Richard is going to help reduce the waste in our farms and market centers. With Echo Richard, you'll we'll be able to increase the income of farmers, reduce their uh, operational costs, unlike the old method of storage and the use of ECG, which increases their operational cost and reduces their income due to the incre increasing price of electricity. With our product, which relies on re renewable solar energy, we have different components that come together to form Eco Recharge. The solar panel generates electricity, saves the stored energy in the battery through the hybrid inverter, then through our energy efficient air conditioner, all in our fabricated structure with our completed structure, operational complete, uh, completed structure on the left-hand side of the picture. This increases income, reduces operational in, uh, cost of uh, our customers. With our customer discovery, very gross uh, interview was done and 44, 47 respondents were interviewed and everything showed that smallholder farmers and market women were ready to use our products. With our financials, we are planning to achieve or to get 8,820,400 Ghana City at the end of the fifth year. And within this fifth year, we should be able to uh, build about 70 cold rooms across the 16 regions in Ghana. And our key drivers are affordable prices, number of working products as Echo Richard cold rooms, and the number of paying customers. In our climate impact, 1,200 tons to 4,005 tons of fruits and vegetables have been saved from spoilage since 2020, uh, since 2020 with our Echo Recharge code room. And with this, we have been able to reduce carbon fruit, uh, footprints, save tons of vegetables and fruit that will emit gases when rotting, environmentally friendly operation by the use of renewable energy with our Echo Richard Cold Room, creates decent jobs for market women and youth in the community for income and resources, example as water, used to cultivate these vegetables and fruits are not wasted. With our founder's dream, we seek to reduce food insecurity, create an innovative, environmental friendly and effective cold room and storage cold chain to extend to the 16 regions and extend and install 70 cold rooms by 2026 to create new energy sources with less impact on the climate to pro provide access to clean energy for growing rural community. And be behind this, we have our formidable team that is Yabi Paul Senai, the founder, Basti Ajo Ohui, the co-founder, Isaac Ahone, our advisor, Lilian Kafu Ikbaku, business development manager, Rebecca Omena as the customer service personnel. We believe that if Echo Recharge is installed, we believe that if Echo Recharge is installed in all centers, market centers and farms, the issue of food insecurity and waste of food will be reduced. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Ellen and I represent Nile Fiber Accessories. 2015 research data from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture says, annually Ghana produces nearly 4 million tons of plantain and banana fruits. While farming this crop has supplemented the income and nutrition of families for years, research also says that every one ton of fruit collected equals two tons of plant waste. The plants, the plantain and banana crop are mostly known for their fruits in Ghana and in other countries. 
but every stem from this crop contains fiber, fiber that can be used for a variety of things. And this is the opportunity we see here at Nile Fiber Accessories. Our business collaborates with smallholder farmers from whom we collect plantain stems from and then extract fiber and then engage the services of weavers who are able to turn this fiber around into exquisite home decor and accessories. Our deal is to sell recycle fiber. Our deal is to sell fiber, home decor fibers um, and accessories to households in Accra at an average of six euros. And by doing this, we are contributing to recycling and upcycling of waste to maximize the use and to the income of farmers and to female weavers. Looking at a global uh, market share of 81 billion for home textiles, which is used for home decos and accessories, and narrowing it down to 46 million euros for Ghana, we are looking at a beachhead market of 1.3 million euros. We offer our customers four things. We offer them quality in terms of the durability of the fiber, high moisture absorbency, and the quick drying properties. We offer them eco-friendliness, a product that is chemical free, toxic free, and odor free. We also offer them upcycling, the opportunity to recycle their old products with us, or using educational videos that we would provide, recycle the, their products from the comfort of their homes. Lastly, we offer them very competitive pricing. With fiber extracted, we are able to produce um, things like plate mats, floor rugs, coasters, and many others. And with us in operation, we are contributing to the recycling and upcycling of waste to maximize their use, to the income of weavers, and to that of smallholder farmers. We interviewed 20 individuals and one hospitality industry. And we discovered that our clients, potential clients are very interested in the state of the climate and they are willing to switch to eco-friendly products if they are available, if they are accessible, if they are functional and if they are of high quality. Looking at our fin financials, we are looking at um, a profit of 590,000 euros per year if we are selling at six euros um, per product, considering a beach head market size of 1.3 million euros at a 5% market share. Research says that waste contributes to 17% of Ghana's CO2 emission and plantain and banana waste contributes to 390, 360 tons of waste uh, CO2 yearly. With us in operation, we are hoping to cut that down by 68,000 tons yearly. We are looking at a team that is passionate about the climate and also very interested in social impact. A team with over eight years work experience um, in a startup operational setting with seven years administrative work experience with uh, nine years engineering work experience and with 13 years in sales and marketing. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matthew Nampwa, the Chief Executive Officer of Mod Cool Ghana. According to Ghana Statistical Service, about 6.6 .6 million Ghanaian households use wood fuel and wood charcoal for cooking and heating. This has partly led to the country losing about 1.31 million hectares of its forest cover within the last decade, according to Global Forest Watch 2020. Not only does this phenomenon of wood fuel dependency negatively hinder the ability of the forest to mitigate the worsening impact of climate change, as well as source of habitat for living organisms, World Health Organization further estimates that nearly 2 million people die annually from pollution due to exposure to uh, uh, biomass, unclean biomass fuels. Now we in Mod Cool are on a mission to change this narrative by producing eco-friendly briquettes from crop residues. Uh, the, our deal, we produce, we produce eco-friendly uh, eco -friendly briquettes from crop residues where we sell the residues at 2,000 cities per ton to our business households. Now, uh, eco-friendly briquettes because one, we use zero wood in our carbonizing process. Two, 
we we clean the environment of waste that could otherwise be discarded or bent, causing CO2 in emissions into the atmosphere. And we're also employing uh, rural shear processors, shear processors, who have been the major suppliers of our raw materials. Now, our beachhead market, with the 78% of Ghanaian households using wood fuel and wood charcoal, this market is valued at 30 billion Ghana cities. And we are focusing on just 2% of the market here, which is valued at 75 million Ghana cities, based on the ability and willingness of our customers to buy. Our customer value proposition, one, our brickets are the same price with wood charcoal and also 44.4% cheaper than liquefied petroleum gas. In terms of energy content, our briquettes are 15.34% higher than wood fuel and wood charcoal. Our product, our, pro our production process begins with the collection of uh, raw materials such as shear nut cells and carbonization of the raw materials in a controlled environment for onward processing into the the briquettes and our briquettes are smokeless. The customer discovery, we hit out to the full to interview 50 customers to find out whether they know about eco-friendly fuels and how much are they ready to pay per a kg of briquettes and whether, uh, why are they still using wood fuel? Now the findings were that 80.77% 80, 80 of the respondents know of eco-friendly fuels. Eco-friendly fuels are expensive. Uh, such as LPG, that's why most of them are not able to use them. And then the customers are already paying two CD per kg of briquette. Our financials, with uh, five, with two percent of the market share, representing five million, uh, representing hundred thousand customers, with each uh, being able to buy uh, half a ton per year at five hundred CDs per uh, at five hundred CDs meaning that we can make 75 million Ghana cities in year five. Our climate impact. If I were to achieve uh, our full production uh, capacity, um, we, we can save 9% of Ghana's forest cover from depletion and reduce CO2 emissions by over 6,000 tons per year. Our team. Our team is made up of dynamic professionals from different backgrounds. Myself, I'm the CEO and co-founder with over five years experience in procurement and supply chain management. Dominic Ndela is a, a co-founder and uh, operations manager with about three years experience in research, scientific research. And Wilson, who for is our chief technology officer, a lecturer in uh, renewable energy at uh, Cape Coast Technical University and a PhD student in sustainable energy development. Lydia Madden to Nkwana is our sales manager with over three years experience in project management. Professor Frances Kimaso is our business advisor and also Professor Akwam Nkrumah University of Science and Technology with over 10 years experience in bioenergy technology, energy planning and energy policy. Our dream is to provide affordable eco-friendly fuel for at least 2% of Ghanaian households in five years, achieve 300 million valuation in, uh, by 2027 and to Our livelihoods of about 6,000 women's share process in two years. According to Barack Obama, the former US president in part of climate change, and we can do something, we, we, we would want your support. Hi, I have a question for you. How many species of plants did you eat yesterday? Many of you probably ate meals containing rice, maize, and wheat. These three crops account for more than 60% of the world's calorie consumption and are responsible for excessive monocropping and agricultural greenhouse gas emissions. In Ghana, there are a variety of climate resilient grains and other crops to choose from, but many of these are underutilized despite their health and environmental benefits. I'm Carly Edwards, CEO of Ground Up Ghana. I have more than a decade's worth of experience in Ghana running public health, community engagement, and nutritional food production projects across the country. At Ground Up Ghana, we're creating a line of food products from underutilized, nutritious, climate-resilient grains like millet, sorghum, beans, sesame seeds, perkesi, and baobab. Our first product is a cereal porridge mix that we will sell to Ghanaian families for approximately 5 euro or 35 CDs for a large bag. 
We will source the raw ingredients from majority female small scale farmers who we will pay a premium for following climate smart agricultural practices, including no till, agroforestry, and cover cropping. Our beachhead market is Ghanaian families living in urban areas who spend 25% of their food budget on bread and cereals for a market of $1 billion annually. Globally, the market for environmentally and socially conscious products like ours is growing and indeed will need to grow if we're to reduce carbon emissions and adapt to consumption of crops that can grow at higher temperatures. Ground Up Ghana's commitment to climate smart agriculture and biodiversity means that we have focused our product development around climate resilient but currently underutilized crops such as millet, sorghum, bambara beans, and sesame. Unlike our corporate competitors, our products do not contain any of the overused monocrops, so our products add diversity and additional nutrients to our customers' diets. Our nature positive porridge mix is great for breakfast or an afternoon snack. All of our products can be traced back to the farms where the greens came from, and we're exploring blockchain to reduce tracing time from days to seconds. We also adhere to international standards of food production, which is implemented by a dedicated team of Ghanaian youth who have been trained in quality procedures from cleaning to production to sample collection. We've spoken with 25 mothers in Ghana and confirmed that they think about the nutrition of the food they feed their families. However, not as many buy food online as we assumed which gives us new insights into how to reach more customers. We also spoke with 15 mothers in the U.S. to understand if they would be interested in impactful products like ours and learned that they do want to buy more ethical foods but do not have time to research them. Additionally, we spoke with six farmer groups in northern Ghana to learn more about how we will structure our supply chain. Farmers we spoke with would be willing to grow more climate resilient crops, but they currently grow more maize because it has a ready market. In year five, we aim for a profit of 1 million euro through sales of 500 metric tons of product to 100,000 loyal customers or households. These customers represent about 2.5 of the urban households in Ghana. Key drivers towards reaching our financial goals are the price of raw ingredients, finding efficient methods to scale production and robust marketing. A team of approximately 35 young majority female staff representing the diversity of Ghana will help us achieve these goals. Our company will help farmers adapt to rising temperatures and changing rainfall patterns by creating a guaranteed market for crops that are able to thrive under these conditions to protect against harvest failure. Our methods also maintain or improve soil health, allowing for continual harvest. When farmers grow crops for ground up Ghana, their conversion from conventional maize farming will reduce emissions from their farms by approximately 80% when reduced emissions and sequestration are combined. Additionally, our business model will increase biodiversity, rural jobs, and community programs such as libraries. Our team is the team to do this. We have a proven track record of success producing food in Ghana to international standards for sale to the United Nations. And we understand the challenges and opportunities of running a food manufacturing company in Ghana. Our dream is to grow a global brand of nature positive foods that will enable a living income for at least 500 female farmers and ensure that at least 1,000 hectares of degraded farmland is restored to be climate resilient through climate smart methods. We hope you'll join us in this mission to adapt to climate change and improve livelihoods in rural Ghana. There's some tasty and unique food in it for you too. We can't wait for you to taste our products. How would you feel when the next generation that come after you would have to be bottled air in order to survive? My name is Isaac Cedio and the team lead for Millicon Air. The deal. Millicon Waste Services would provide Millicon Air to our customer segment, which is four stations, automobile companies, regulatory agencies, and mechanic shops for a cost of 34.19 euros. The product benefits is that it reduces air pollution, reduces health risk, and reduces island heat effects. Our beachhead market. Within the first five years, we would like to establish our food base in Ghana. Then in the sixth year, we would like to expand to other African countries through the African Union. Yeah, we would like to have a goal. We would like to move to other continents. 50% of our products will be given to four stations, 10% to mechanics, and 20% each for automobile companies and government regulatory agencies. Our customer value protection is cost effective 
It's reduced price for maintenance, and 2% of the profits of every product sold is related to organizations to fight against climate change. And our, the cost of our product is the best compared to our competitors in the market. Our product is also has a circular economy theory back behind it, which explains that the materials used in making the product is reused all over and over again without having an end of life. And also fair trade. That means our product is made of high quality and ethically produced. It's, our product falls in line with five SDG goals, which is goal eight, goal nine, goal 11, goal 12, and goal 13, which is productive employment, sustainable industrialization, sustainable cities, responsible consumption production, and climate action. Customer discovery. We interviewed 10 mechanics and 15 four stations, and the assumptions were clients are willing to purchase products in this cars more environmentally friendly, clients are willing to alter cars to reduce air, to reduce air pollution, and clients are willing to sell different air to end users. The findings that we obtained were quite unique, which is clients had less knowledge or no knowledge at all about climate change, and clients were willing to sell the products to obtain profits to the end users, and clients are willing to alter cars to reduce air pollution effects. Our financials in the year 2026, so with a profit per product of 8.55 euros, the profit per year will be a whooping 32 million, 547,168 euros. And our budget market is 31 million. And the market share which we are producing for the market is 12%. The key driver is goes for the cost of products, the agency, and number of end users, which are the vehicle owners. Our climate impact, percent of our budget about 180,000 tons of CO2 to the current capacity converter produces 45 milligrams per mile of NO2 emissions, with but the different energy produces 15 milligrams per mile lesser than the current solution, therefore making ours the most desirable one to come in the future, near future. So the additional environmental impact to seek avenues to employment. We our products also reduce the specific drug disease, the risk of coral bleaching and post harvest losses. Then our funders and team stream, which comprises financial scientists and financial scientists and a sales and manager advisor, stating by restoring the average surface temperature to 1.5 researchers. We also seek to empower each individual to impact on climate change by using our creative device that's to achieve a 1 billion variation by this data to tell the st our story at the world, to the world of the UN summit. Thank you very much. My name is Benjamin Aji, Texan, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Asenra, which is a circular economy within a clean tech startup. That is leveraging localized and adaptive uh, data technologies to address three complex societal problems that's with waste pollution and its associated climate disparities and then uh, the challenge with economic inclusion so we look at building resilience for low and middle income households with the waste that they themselves generate that they generate so we found that um, in Takradi there is a book there are about 465 tons of valuable waste that are being generated each day, but these waste are poorly managed, which further depends the vulnerability of these informal sector workers to diseases and also um, disasters. So we are deal as a business is to uh, optimize the waste management value chain such that we could convert waste, uh, waste into resource streams and also generate uh, 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 about 1.64 dollars each day for each household per the waste that they generate. By this, we are building the resilience of these households to shocks like COVID-19 pandemic and also catalyzing efforts uh, around the industrial management of waste to uh, transition from uh, the exploitation of virgin materials. Now, this is how our product works where we offer people who have whether access to uh, the um, smartphone or feature from the opportunity to aggregate waste, get it credited to their accounts, 
verified and uh, credited to the account and our online market store, which is uh, a market store for waste materials, serving as uh, a platform where recyclers and off takers can sign up to purchase the waste that are being allocated from uh, the household. So customers are able to cash out when they reach a threshold of 200 kilograms of waste that they have aggregated. Yeah, so we uh, interviewed households, facilities and recyclers about um, the means of disposal of waste and they are interested in segregating waste and also for recyclers, how they could source for waste traffic um, you know, more innovatively. And we found out interestingly that households were willing to segregate their waste if they could get value for the waste and also households also willing to leverage easily adaptable technologies to uh, uh, facilitate the management of their waste. And recyclers are also willing to adopt a very innovative ways of sourcing waste to fuel their operation. So with this, the value that we are giving to most of our customers is that because our system is more digitized, it offers them an easy and alternative savings means just with the waste that they generate. And it's a highly transparent system where a, a customer knows how much we are able to also get a fair price in for our customers. And for recycling uh, uh, innovation that are sourced from where they are. Get them, uh, get them delivered to them readily sorted and in a more timely manner, and this cuts down the procurement cost that they incur to source for the waste. According to the World Bank Market uh, research on uh, waste, we found out that the African waste management value chain is valued at around 18 billion, and the Ghana has about 300 million of that share, and Tapra has about 6 million of this, and we are looking at getting about 15% of this market share. At the end of our fifth year of our vision, um, so there's some all sales that goes on on our online market store and through subscription. And we are looking at building this model to a very more concrete one, which going forward we can franchise it to other parts of the country and even some parts of uh, Africa too. Now we are looking at uh, we are looking at doing about. 18,150 tons in a year, which uh, uh, translates to a profit margin of 23.4, uh, sorry, 25, sorry, 23.46 percent. Uh, that's um, 1.5 million dollars at the end of um, uh, a year. And with that, we look at growing our customer base to about 25 percent each year. The climate impact that this solution will do uh, will bring will, uh, uh, reducing methane emissions from landfill because we are diverting waste back into resource streams. All right, so um, with our financials, we are looking at um, using our technology to recover about 18,150 uh, tons of um, waste materials, and that will translate to a profit of $1.5 million at the end of our, year, uh, our first year of operation. And with the climate impact that we are looking at making with our solution is to divert waste from landfills. And with this, we'll be able to uh, minimize methane emissions and also uh, reduce industrial energy using uh, 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 recovering materials. And also, we'll um, use our solution to promote energy recovery from waste and also uh, discourage the, uh, uh, the exploitation of virgin materials materials from natural resource, thereby promoting carbon sequestration. Now the team that makes this possible is uh, an incredible team, a youth-led and gender balanced team with a combined experience of 15 years in the industry, in uh, both the industry and in our various fields. Myself being a CEO, I, I'm, uh, I hold an infield in environment and resource management with four years experience in secular design and research. And also, Evans being a, a chief product officer who helps in the development of our technology is a full stack developer with a BSc in computer science and patients who is um, our operations lead has a very strong competence in social change development and communication with a background in 
uh, planning. And we have quite a number of partners who help us with our business development and also our technology development. And we look forward to uh, being part of Climate Launchpad to further develop our business and also uh, attract investment to make uh, our business a successful one. This is our contact and thank you for uh, having me. Thank you all for very wonderful presentation. I think we had really, really interesting uh, interesting business models. And I guess, I mean, one, one of the things that I have come to recognize is that, you know, sometimes in a competition, the, based on the factors that the people who built or who are sponsoring the competition are looking out for, um, a, different a different company could emerge you know, tops or, you know, um, last, just depending on the criteria that they are looking out for. So the fact that you don't make it to the top three here, it's in no way a judgment of your business model. It's, it's in no way, um, uh, we are not passing a judgment on your business model. We are basically um, providing the type of businesses that this particular competition requires, you know, so that's how you should take this. Um, my understanding is that the winning companies are going to get free, you know, coaching, support from the Ghana Climate Innovation Center. And then they are also going to represent Ghana in the um, international finals for the Climate Launch Park competition. So the top three teams, the third team was Modco. Um, congratulations, Modco. You are, you are Number three. Number two was um, World Tech Consult. And then the top is Nile Fiber Accessories. So congratulations to the three. Um, I'm sure if this was in a hall, we'll hear the claps for all the three. So <laughs> imagine the claps happening right now and congratulations to you. Um, if we're, I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to you to continue. Thank you. Thank you. I can see the Thank smile you. on your face, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, it was, it was good meeting all of you. I might actually reach out to some of you um, that I find interesting to um, also discuss some business opportunities with, so. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Nas. So um, congrats to the top three. And I'll be sharing certificates for everybody who took part today. So you have the set to at least brag about your participation in the program. Thank you all for joining and well done. Have a lovely day.